So question 18, it says, um, gravity always tries to collapse the mass of a star toward its center, right? And I think I've mentioned in multiple places that uh, what drives the stellar evolution cycle is that balancing between the collapsing uh, pull of gravity and something that's uh, opposing the pull um, to establish a hydrostatic equilibrium. So uh, for most of stars life cycle, we expect that hydrostatic equilibrium to be maintained. And it's a question of what provides that outward pressure for maintaining the hydrostatic equilibrium. So uh, let's go through each stage one at a time. Um, you know, let me start from the beginning as in the very first uh, uh, initial stage of star formation. So protostar and accretion stage it would be the initial stage of the star formation. And I'm inclined to say no equilibrium um, because um, this is uh, literally the stage when the materials are gathering together uh, until it contracts enough for nuclear fusion to start. So this should be A. And once it contracts enough, and nuclear fusion starts, then it starts the main sequence stage. This is the stable stage of star's life. It spends most of its life there. Um, like for a star like our sun, it'll spend 10 billion years on that stage. So let's see here. So there must be hydrostatic equilibrium. Um, uh, here it is, outward force due to a combination of gas pressure and radiation pressure. And which one, is more significant, it, um, it depends. It, um, yeah, it, it depends on, um, it, it, it depends on uh, the mass of the star. For star like our sun, it's the gas pressure that'll be the dominant factor. But uh, when you um, plug numbers into the, the standard solar model and you run the numbers for a much more massive star, then at some stage, the radiation pressure actually becomes more important. But combination, so it could be either. Okay, so when we are at red giant stage, so this is uh, towards the end of a uh, star's life. Um, it uh, burned out all the nuclear fuel at the core. And uh, as the star begins to contract, the, the core temperature goes up. So uh, nuclear fusion reignites in the outer layers. And uh, what the textbook says is that the, the volume in which it, the fusion takes place, it's actually greater. So uh, more energy is produced and that uh, pushes the outer edges out. And at some point, the hydrostatic equilibrium is maintained again. The, um, so, um, and the, yeah, so it's still gonna be C. And in any case, if it's A, then it's wrong. The star, it's not con contracting, it's expanding. So <laughs> the test taking strategy, I think it's C on that basis. And white dwarf is an interesting one. That's when um, all the nuclear fuel has been burned out. There's uh, no way, the star has no mechanism for producing energy. So it's going to keep cooling and cooling and cooling and the, the material is gonna just shrink in. Uh, at some point, um, at some point, the star is just as compact as it can be, and uh, that uh, and there's a pressure that's provided that's not the thermal pressure, that's the gas pressure. It's a quantum mechanical pressure. It's called the degeneracy of matter, and with the white dwarf, it's the um, degeneracy of the electrons that maintains the size and. For stars that are heavier than our sun, uh, it might end up as a, a neutron star. That's where degeneracy of the neutrons, <laughs> um, electrons having been forced into proton to, uh, so that the whole thing is made out of neutrons. Um, so th that'll be what happens with the stars that are much more massive than our sun. And stars even more massive than that, then um, it might undergo super Nova explosion and there might be a black hole in the middle or something, I don't know. So that would be the choices. Um, yeah, so so this uh, uh, hydrostatic equilibrium, equilibrium is important concept in understanding the forces that drive stellar evolution. 